There are four statues of Bavarian kings in Munich. There's the statue of King Maximilian I Joseph of Bavaria, the statue of King Ludwig I, the statue of King Maximilian II Joseph of Bavaria, and the statue of King Woods. Uh, where is it? Not here. Okay, there's a bridge. Uh, not here. Oh, getting dizzy. Um, I think in front of me. Um, there's the statue of Ludwig I of Bavaria. And this one is a modern statue. However, Bavaria had six kings. Where are the other two? And why is Ludwig II hidden? Let's start at the beginning. In 1806, under Napoleonic rule, the Kingdom of Bavaria was founded and it ended in 1918, after the First World War. Bavaria had six kings, all belonging to the Wittelsbach dynasty. Beginning with Maximilian I Joseph of Bavaria from the 1st of January 1806 to the 13th October 1825. Next in line was Ludwig I, who shaped Munich the most, who had to abdicate in the revolutionary year of 1848. His son Maximilian II Joseph of Bavaria followed until his death in 1864. After him came the famous King Ludwig II, who had, let's say, a very special relationship with Munich. He was declared unfit for office on 13th June 1886. Ludwig's brother Otto became his successor, but Otto's story is a sad one. Otto had several mental illnesses. It is suspected that he suffered from schizophrenia and syphilis. That is why he was never a reigning king and his uncle Luitpold was appointed Prince Regent. Luitpold was quite popular among the people, therefore he got his statue. Otto didn't. <laughs> After the death of Prince Regent Luitpold in 1912, his son Ludwig III became Prince Regent. And later, in 1913, he was proclaimed king. In 1918, he was overthrown by the November Revolution in Germany. And as revolutionaries do not erect monuments for overthrown monarchs, he does not have a statue. Now that two of the six kings have been eliminated, one question remains unanswered. Why is Ludwig's monument hidden in a park north of the Bavarian Parliament building, the Maximilianeum? Isn't he the Kini, as the Bavarians say? In other words, the Bavarian king par excellence? Didn't he build the fairy tale castle of Linderhof? Herren Chiemsee? And Neuschwanstein? The answer is still highly political to this day. At first, Ludwig II hated Munich. For him, it was the, quote, hated, unfortunate city, a city full of loafers and philistines. Conversely, the people of Munich despised the lavish and shy king who retreated to his dream castles in the Alps and never showed his face in Munich. In contrast to his grandfather, Ludwig I, he hardly ever built in Munich. However, the construction of his palaces almost caused the financial ruin of the House of Wittelsbach. A good thing from a point of view of a Republican. It was not until 1901 that the last loan was paid off. All in all, King Ludwig was a weak king. At the time of political turmoil and the founding of the German Empire, he could do little to counter political heavyweights such as Bismarck. Instead, he accepted Prussian money payments in exchange for the German unification. Today, this would be called corruption. He was an absolutist in the age of modernity far removed from an enlightened constitutional monarch. On the 13th June 1886, Ludwig's body and that of his psychiatrist Bernhard von Gudden were found in knee-deep water of Lake Starnberg. The exact circumstances of their death remain unknown to this day. Theories range from accident to suicide to murder. In any case, Ludwig's death was the beginning of the myth King Ludwig. Today he is the fairy tale king, an idol of the gay rights movement due to his suppressed homosexuality, the dream king of Bavarian royalists, for the left a fighter against anti-Semitism, for opera friends a patron of Richard Wagner, I know the irony, 
every group discovers an ally in Ludwig II and most of it has nothing to do with the historical truth. There are Ludwig musicals, suites, t-shirts and, of course, beer mugs and so on. No other Bavarian monarch is so idealized. However, it is important for me to mention that there was an older Ludwig II monument in Munich. It was inaugurated on the Cornelius Bridge in 1910, 35 years later than the Max Monument, the youngest of the three other royal statues. So, at the time when the contemporary witnesses were slowly forgotten and the mist took over, Ludwig's monument was destroyed during the war in 1943. By now, some of you might have realized that I'm not the biggest fan of Ludwig II. Sure, he built impressive palaces, but these were originally only intended for him and he also harbored the wish that his castle should be destroyed after his death. Today, of course, they are tourist magnets. His grandfather, Ludwig I, is closer to me, whose buildings were always in the service of the state and who had a significant influence on Munich. So this was a very short ride through the history of the Bavarian kings. I hope it was somehow informative and I hope all the Ludwig II fans are not too mad at me. I'm pretty sure there is much more to tell about Ludwig II and other kings and I will do videos in the future. Um, leave a like, leave a subscribe and if you're interested in a tour, here's my email address and just contact me and I'll give you a tour through Munich. See you in the next video.